Hello everyone, we're looking at our sixth and final lesson in Unit 1, uh, which is Development of Sport. Today our title is Recreational Sport. Our learning objective is to understand how recreational sport became more popular, and our starters to look back to what we've talked about in previous lessons, the big differences between pro and amateur. So can you please go ahead and write down your title, LO, and your starter. Uh, when you feel that you're finished and ready to move along, you can go ahead and resume playing the video, and we'll take up the starter together. So some differences between amateurs and professionals. So an amateur is defined as someone who engages in something for pleasure rather than for financial or professional reasons. A professional is someone who does something because they receive payment for their performance. So anyone who teaches you are professional teachers. Uh, they teach because, well, they enjoy it, but because that's what they do for financial payment. Now, your teachers, although they're professional teachers, might be amateurs in other areas. So they might be an amateur footballer, they might be an amateur woodworker, uh, they might be an amateur artist. They don't make money from playing football or woodworking or making art, uh, but they do it for pleasure rather than financial gain. So the main way to remember the difference between amateurs and pros, uh, amateurs don't get paid anything. Professionals get payment. So here we have four keywords to look at, Hawkeye, Boot Money, Archery, and Grappling. There's a few ways that you can go about doing these. You can either use process of elimination, do the ones you know, uh, just do them in your head and then try to figure out the ones that you are unsure of. You can also have a look in your leisure textbook by uh, opening it up online and hitting Control F at the same time and you can type in the word Hawkeye, Boot Money, Archery, or Grappling and it should bring up a definition for you. Whichever way you go about it, try to figure these out on your own. Uh, you can pause the screen now, and when you're ready to take them up, go ahead and hit play. So having a look at our first term, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a instant replay service used to determine the accuracy of points in tennis. It's kind of like a video replay uh, that can show exactly where the ball lands. But the Hawkeye technology is quite unique as it actually predicts where the ball is going to land before it lands there. And it's called Hawkeye simply because while well, Hawks are very famous for having extremely good vision. Boot money we've learned about. This is under the table or illegal payments made to athletes, often anonymously. Archery, law to be practiced between the ages of 15 and 60. And grappling, a form of team wrestling. In a moment, we'll look at two videos that show how Hawkeye works. The videos explain it far better than I ever possibly could, but it's a really complicated computer system that uses a number of cameras positioned around uh, the sports uh, stadium. So whether it's cricket, tennis, Gaelic football, badminton, hurling, rugby union, association football, volleyball, it tracks the trajectory of a ball and records where it's most likely to move to next. And this is why if you've ever watched tennis, they show the instant replay of where the ball landed almost instantaneously. And that's because the computers are constantly calculating where every single ball is most likely to land based on its speed and trajectory. So let's take a look at those two video clips now. The fastest serve ever recorded was 263 kilometers an hour. That's crazy fast and almost impossible to follow with the naked eye. Enter. Hawkeye. It's tennis's version of a video replay and it's used in 80 tournaments around the world. It consists of 10 cameras positioned around the court tracking the ball. While other sports use their cameras to tell you what happened, Hawkeye uses those cameras to calculate what's going to happen. Flight of the ball and whether or not it would have been in or out. That's right. A computer does all the work. It's accurate to within five millimeters and can produce the virtual reality image in under 10 seconds. Are there flaws? Of course. We all know computers break down. Not all courts are equipped with the technology. And sometimes players just don't agree. Yeah. And while some players don't love it, others, like Andy Murray, don't seem to mind it. Fine, so some people don't love it, but it's been used in tennis since 2002. 
Hawkeye was developed by a man named Paul Hawkins, and it was originally designed for cricket, but really took off in tennis. And trust me when I say this, it's here to stay. So we've looked at Hawkeye technology. We're going to do a reading now. You can find this in your leisure textbook, uh, or you can go ahead and just follow along on the screen. But as always, pause the video periodically to be able to keep up with the reading and make some notes as we're going through this together. In the 1960s, coverage of the Olympics drew large audiences, and in 1966, the World Cup final between England and West Germany, England 4, W Germany 2, at Wembley was watched on both channels by 32.6 million people. Wimbledon became a television event, and rugby union increased in popularity with the screening of the Five Nations Championship. Cricket embraced change and televised one-day matches alongside test matches. The arrival of colour television in the late 1960s catapulted snooker as an armchair sport and saw many take it up as a recreational sport. The popularity of video recorders in the 1980s meant that games could be watched and stored. The 1990s witnessed a huge shake-up with the arrival of satellite television in the form of Skype and pay-to-watch sports. Changes in technology have added to the excitement of games with the use of Hawkeye in tennis, video replays in cricket and rugby and goal line technology in football. On a negative note, crowds especially at football matches became younger giving rise to a subculture of hooliganism and violence between rival supporters which gained much media coverage. The 1970s experienced an explosion in the growth of the leisure industry. Sports such as golf, hockey, tennis and squash provided facilities through sports clubs while swimming and athletics became more dependent on publicly provided facilities. Basketball and badminton grew in popularity after the 1960s owing to the provision of over 800 sports clubs. Government initiatives such as Sports for All in 1972 were set up to encourage more participation in sport. Concerns over obesity and lack of exercise led to an increase in private gyms and health clubs where people could fit in sessions alongside daily work routines. Walking, jogging and cycling were promoted as excellent ways of keeping fit. The Ever Thought of Sport initiative in 1985 targeted 13 to 24 year olds. Although schools provided physical education lessons, the number of matches played declined especially on Saturdays. The void was filled by local clubs in sports like football, rugby, cricket and hockey. Junior and mini sides at all ages emphasized the need to develop skills and enjoy sport. 1981 was International Year of the Disabled and highlighted the need to improve recreational facilities for people with disabilities. At the highest level of competition, the Paralympics has become one of the largest international sporting events by the early 21st century. Paralympians strive for equal treatment with non-disabled Olympic athletes, but there is a large funding gap between Olympic and Paralympic athletes. So we've got two things to do. We have a series of summary questions and then a final revision resource for Unit 1. The questions that you are to write down and answer in your notes are as follows. Question 1. How many cameras are used in Hawkeye? And we can go back to the video to find this information. What is a armchair sport? If you go to the reading, there's a clear description listed for you there. How do armchair sports encourage people to try to participate in sport? Number four, how has sport changed from 500 to present day? A question we've looked at in previous lessons. Make sure you're discussing those three historical eras. We have the medieval era, the early modern era, and the modern era. Question five, how has professionalism developed in sport? Uh, we would expect to discuss things like boot money and broken time payments in question five. How has amateur sport grown from 1900 to the present day, referring back to our reading? And number seven, how has technology changed sport between 500 and present day? And again, there'd be an anticipation of discussion of things such as Hawkeye, as well as professionalization, in particular uh, professional leagues that we have discussed. Now, when you're finished with those seven questions, 
please move on to make a final revision resource for Unit 1. And this is a way to culminate all of the knowledge that you've acquired throughout this unit. So you can make a series of flashcards, perhaps a revision poster, maybe mind maps for each lesson that we've done. Just use your lesson titles to be able to summarize the information covered. You can set some historical context for each historical era that we've discussed. Or you can make a list of key terms or glossaries similar to those that you've used in your summary booklets while in school. So pause the video now. You have a fair bit to get started on. And as always, any questions, please make sure you get in touch with your teacher.